everybody, Kurt Bandit here. Swag, right? <laughs> um, what I'm going to be doing today is going over fanning powder and how I, uh, how I use fanning powder or just how I put fanning powder on my cards, essentially. It's essentially going to be how I put fanning powder on my cards and some do's and don'ts and things like that. For those of you who do not know what fanning powder is, fanning powder is a powder that looks like crack that you put on your cards. <laughs> essentially what it does, though, is it makes the cards a little bit more grippy but so it adds a sort of a layer of friction but it allows you to still fan the cards nicely what it allows you to do is do more complicated fans or do fans that have cards that'll stick to each together nicely without coming apart all over the place it essentially really helps with your fans but it also helps with card cuts because you have that added friction to the cards and it makes it easier for you to do card cuts because the cards hold together nicely without further ado let's get into some do's and don'ts i guess of fanning powder all right so a do when you're or some things you should do when you're about to use fanning powder is read the warning label. <laughs> no one needs to read the labels on how to use this thing. Everyone comes up with their own methods anyway. So now let's go into like some do's and don'ts. You don't want to wear dark clothes because if the powder gets everywhere, it'll get all over those clothes. <sighs> Trust me, experience has taught me don't wear dark clothes. Don't wear dark jeans. Don't, so don't wear dark clothes. I know I'm wearing gray, but eh, that's a gray area. You don't want to do this inside. You do want to try and do it outside if you can, just because the powder can get everywhere and you can inhale it, hence there is a warning label. So if you can go outside and do it, I'll go outside even if it's snowing. It's just way easier and saves your lungs. Yeah, you, you don't want to like spread it over top of a surface really, because then you have to clean up the surface and that can take a while. So if you're thinking of like dumping it out onto a surface and like putting your cards into it. I have a much better way of doing it because then you have to clean up the surface that it's on and that can just be messy too. If you have a dry environment that you can do it in, do it in that. So if it's like really humid outside, try and wait till a, dry, till a drier day just because sometimes the humidity can get into the powder and it makes it spread a little bit more unevenly. Decks of cards you want to use fanning powder on. You don't want to use a black deck because it'll fade the black. You also don't want to use it on like a very smooth finish deck, like a knock deck. This is V3. V2s would be fine. V3 is not okay just because it's a very smooth finish. Or like even if you have a smooth finish, you don't want to use it on that just because the powder won't have any effect on the cards and it's really not going to help you out. The powder will just slide off and it, it'll just be a mess and it won't really work. You also don't want to use it on a very brand new deck. Why don't you want to use it on a brand new deck? Well, because it's still got that slippery finish on it, and essentially the fanning powder is not going to do any good. Because that coating, that slippery coating's on there already on a brand new deck, it's just going to slide right off, and it'll get into some parts of the deck that may be slightly worn away. So you definitely don't want a brand new deck just because it'll slide off the powder. The powder will slide off, and it essentially negates all the effects that the powder might have. So a good deck to use would be a bicycle deck or anything with like a linen or air cushion finish. Decks like that are pretty good to use fanning powder on just because it'll adhere to the, the pores of the deck and it, as long as it's well used. All right, so to start powdering your cards, what you're gonna wanna do is grab a little bag. <clears throat> a little bag like the one I have here. Open up the bag, take your fanning powder, and you're gonna to wanna to pour a generous amount of powder into the bag. So I don't know whether you can see this, but I have like a nice, good layer of powder along the bottom. And it's just slightly along the bottom, I don't know, maybe a centimeter up from the bottom. That's roughly how much powder I use when I'm powdering my cards. And then you can go outside and get arrested by the police. Anyway, what you do from this point is you'll take half the deck of cards. You only want to do half at a time. And then what you do is you drop them in. Then you just seal the bag up. Then what you do is you sort of like shake the bag at the same time. Like you can sort of riffle the cards within the bag to sort of get the 
like rub the cards a little bit while they're in the bag just to get the, the powder to spread in, in between the cards a little bit more. Spread the cards within the bag and then shake some more just to really get that powder onto the cards. Alrighty, now that the cards are coated, you're going to want to do the next part outside all the time, hands down. Doesn't matter if it's snowing, raining, whatever. Actually, if it's raining, I'd wait for another day because then your cards get ruined anyway. Um, but I would say you want to wait until a nicer day to put fanning powder on your cards because the next part you want to do outside. You don't want to do it inside because the dust gets everywhere. So if you think every weather is shitty weather, it's snowing right now. It looks like this. I'm in a t-shirt. Don't be a wimp. Go outside and do this. So anyway, you're going to open up your bag. And what you might notice is that your coat cards are really, really coated. What you want to do is you want to brush, brush them off as much as you can, trying to keep as much powder as you can in the bag. Yeah, so once you've pretty much brushed as much powder as you can back into the bag, you're going to want to put the bag down. You'll still notice like a whole bunch of powder on the cards. That's normal. <laughs> That, that is why you do this outside. <laughs> so essentially what you're going to do... <laughs> I should have brushed these off way better. Um, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to do a couple uh, pharaoh, pharaoh shuffles of half the deck. <laughs> to get those cards really together. So as you can see, you're, you should be really generous with this powder. And this is why you do it outside if you're doing this method. <laughs> So essentially, you really get the, you ferro these cards together several times. You're going to want to riffle them, maybe holding your breath a little bit, and riffling them down lower so that the, uh, the powder doesn't jump up in your face as much. You really also want to make sure, I should have done this beforehand, you should do this beforehand, but make sure that you're riffling the powder off away from your face and that'll get more of the powder off and do both sides because you can see more powder coming off and this will actually help alleviate some of the powder like get the powder out there before you end up actually shuffling so you just want to really repeat the process of like riffling the cards together Farrowing them together as well because farrowing them helps like really jam the powder in there So sort of like a combination riffle farrow riffle farrow And you can also do regular shuffles as well to slide the powder on top of the cards if you're not as comfortable with your farrow shuffle You pretty much do that as until you're confident the cards And the powder is spread evenly onto the cards and until there's not as much powder coming up off them whenever you do a riffle. So in order to save you some time and in order to save me some time because I'm lazy I skip over powdering the second half of the deck but I feel like it's self-explanatory where you just ferro the cards, riffle the cards, uh, overhand shuffle the cards and you can even peel off the cards one by one in sort of an overhand fashion to get the powder to smush in there even further. But that being said let's move on to what happens after you got both halves powdered. So at this point you have two powdered halves of a deck. And then all you do is you fare those two halves together, like so. And then just shuffle them up a little bit and mix them together. And then that's it. That's your powdered deck of playing cards. Now you may be thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, it's such a process to powder my cards this way. But honestly, it's not. Um, if you powder your cards this way, you do half the deck at once and then the other half. And if you think about powdering each individual card, it takes way more time. You mess up a surface like a desk or something like that that you have to clean up afterwards, which can be tricky. And you have to do each individual card, which takes forever. <clears throat> this way I find you still get the powder there spread evenly and it takes much less time. To show you that the cards still fan nicely after using this method of powdering, we have a thumb fan. We have a smear fan. And we have our 360 fan. 
which I think looks pretty dope. All right, and that's how I put fanning powder on my cards. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Also, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below on how you guys like to powder your cards, or if you like the method, or if you like the video, whatever, guys. I'd really like to see some comments in the comment section below. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will, as always, catch you later.